Hi, it's Rick here from The Game Creators. Happy New Year to you. And as part of the New Year celebrations, I'm bringing back some tutorials for you on YouTube. I ran a little uh, poll on YouTube asking what people would like to see in the channel. And it became very clear that people wanted to see the creation of a game from start to finish and actually publishing it onto the app stores. So that's what I'm going to hopefully achieve and um, it'll be new for me because in our business I don't tend to get involved in the actual publishing of apps so I'm going to have to learn that from my colleagues. So I've come up with a simple idea for a game. I'm using App Game Kit Studio as you can see and I've used the scene editor to create uh, a main menu. As you can see my game's called Silly Seesaw. That's a working title, it might end up being the final title, I don't know. This scene has got two, well, it's got three sprites. It's got the title, it's got a start button, and it's also got a background image, which I've locked, actually. So if I unlock all sprites with that, you can see that this is an image in the background. It actually stretches, I've cropped it. Um, I might make it scroll, um, but for now I'm just cropping it to the size of the screen. I'm using 1080, 920 resolution, uh, portrait screen for this game and I'm locking that sprite so I don't keep moving it and yeah these these um, titles and start buttons I, I made with a, a piece of software online actually that you can just type some text in I'll link to it in the video below and you can use all fonts and it creates the images for you because I'm no artist uh, I will need some art for this this game uh, but that will come later when I've decided how it's going to work. So that's the title page. There's also a, a game screen here. This is very basic. It's There's no gameplay at this stage. My idea is to have a random ball dropping down every so often. And then you'll be able to touch these uh, platforms which will rotate based on um, where you touch them. If you touch them left, they'll rotate that way touch on the right and rotate to the right and you've got to then get these uh, balls that are dropping down into the right buckets so this is just laying it out in this tutorial we're not really too concerned about the gameplay at this stage uh, I can just preview this because we've got some basic physics set up the ball drops down and interacts with the platform but that's not actually how it's going to work uh, the platform will move based on you touching it and there may be different platforms and different levels. Um, but anyway, that's me just setting it up. If we go back to main.agc. This is the code I've written so far. Not, not a great deal, but it's a start. Uh, let's just uh, run through it. I've kept it very, very minimal. So you can hopefully easily understand it. Um, first commands are hash include men, mm, well, mmenu.scene and game.scene. I did call it main menu .scene, but that caused a conflict with main.agc and didn't work. So I've made a note of that and we'll aim to fix that in the future version. So that makes sure that these scenes are incorporated into the source code because if you don't know, the scenes, although they look very visual and you can move things around on them and scale them, uh, behind all of that work is code being generated. If we click on the script, you can see it's generating all its code. So that code has to be included into the project, and that's when we do that here. Um, I'm setting up a global variable called game start in my next command, and then I'm using set new default fonts. Uh, that makes sure we get true type fonts in the in our application. I was using some text. I'm not using any now, so I might not need that. But it's always good to have that in. Uh, then I make a call to the function mmenu setup, which is inside this scene. So if we go into the source code, we can see there's the function mmenu setup. And all that code basically just creates this scene. So all that work's done for you. So I call, make that call, that draws the screen. Then I do uh, set virtual resolution, so I'm setting up... Um, yeah, I don't, I don't need that rem there. It's old from somewhere else. Yeah, I'm making a portrait screen, and that's going to work on most devices these days. And um, 
that's a good portrait aspect ratio and then I use set orientation allowed um, so that it only works in portrait up and down so one and one gives it portrait I'm restricting it being used in landscape mode because it'll be very squashed if I did that then we get to the main menu control loop uh, which is a repeat until loop it goes around this loop we can see close that up and open that up so we're doing a get pointer pressed we're checking to see if there's been any any interaction with the screen and so if there has been an interaction we'll use get sprite hit let's just have a look at that in the help I just pressed F1 uh, when I had my cursor over get sprite hit and it gives me the text so it returns the ID of the first sprite found under the point X and Y in world coordinates so we are we're getting the pointer X and the pointer Y because we know that something's been pressed so then we say, well, does that sprite number equal the same one as M menu start? What does M menu start want? If we go back to the main menu scene, look at the properties and click on this sprite here, its unique variable name is M menu start. So we're saying if someone's touched the screen um, and they touch a sprite, so they might touch this one up here or the background or this one. Is that the same as our start button? And if it is, then we set our flag game start to one. Okay. By default, all values are sort of start to zero, so we're setting it to one. And we can be absolutely certain and go up here and say, well, game start. Yeah, start equals zero. So if you're uncertain whether things are set to zero, it's best to set them. So then we said it's game start one, and we'll come to that in a moment. Then we end out of that if and end out of that if, and then we do a sync, okay, because we want to make sure the screen's drawn for the uh, scene. Then we do a sync, and then we check until game start equals one. So it does in this case because we press the button one. So then we call menu cleanup another function that basically gets rid of the main menu and then we call game setup which is a function to do with this scene and that will draw that scene and again we just sit in a loop drawing the scene over and over again so if we just run this okay I click around nothing's happening but as soon as I click on this sprite boom I go into that scene and there's a bit of physics that's uh, set up and running but that's not how it's going to work I've, I've got that's my next phase of development I've got to get the gameplay underway and there has to be some checks and collision here down here uh, but that's it that's what I've started and um, let's see how many weeks it'll take to do this because I don't know I don't know whether it's going to be uh, an easy game to write or a simple game to write we'll have to see how it evolves but my aim would be within about a month's time to have something finished and then have it um, published onto an app store so you can all download it and try it out. So hopefully that's um, something that's going to be of interest to you and I'll try and um, pull out interesting things as we go along and um, let me have your feedback in the comments and uh, yeah, look forward to talk to you next time in the next video. Okay, bye for now.